Hello, my name is Carla Davis. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics at Baylor College of Medicine and the director of the food allergy program at Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas. Today, we're going to talk about the true health effects of celiac disease versus non-celiac gluten intolerance versus wheat allergy. Celiac disease is a serious genetic autoimmune disorder that's caused by an autoimmune reaction to a protein in food called gluten. Celiac disease affects um, about one in 100 people and it is a hereditary disease. If a person has a parent, sibling, or a child with celiac disease, then that person has a one in 10 risk of developing the disorder. When people eat a food that has gluten and has celiac disease, um, the body mounts an immune response against small finger-like projections in the small intestine called villi. Um, when this happens, the villi are damaged and the small intestine cannot properly absorb nutrients from the diet. Um, each person that has celiac disease, um, when they eat gluten, can have this response. Gluten is found in wheat, rye, and barley. The symptoms that can occur when a person eats gluten that has celiac disease are as follows. There can be abdominal symptoms like diarrhea, bloating, cramping, heartburn, indigestion, flatulence, and, um, and also there can be non-intestinal symptoms. And some of these symptoms include anemia, chronic osteoporosis, chronic fatigue. A person can have neurologic symptoms. Sometimes they can have skin rashes. And, um, and also pain in the joints as well as malnutrition. All of these symptoms can be signs of celiac disease. In order to diagnose celiac disease, a blood test can be performed for an antibody called immunoglobulin A anti-tissue transglutaminase. This test is not 100% accurate but can be a guide, if positive, um, to the diagnosis of celiac disease. Patients can also have a test to look for a gene that's very common in patients with celiac disease. And this gene is called HLA-DQR or HLA-DQ8. Because these blood tests are not 100% accurate, patients who have high suspicion of having celiac disease should also be referred to a gastroenterologist to have a procedure called an endoscopy. With this procedure, a small tube is passed through the mouth into the gastrointestinal tract so that the gastroenterologist can see any intestinal damage and take a biopsy or a piece of tissue to look to see if there's inflammation. The patients that are at risk of having celiac disease, um, if they have the biopsy performed, um, should be ingesting gluten, because if they are not ingesting gluten, then there may be no signs of celiac disease on the endoscopy. If patients are not eating gluten um, and are suspected to have celiac disease, a gluten challenge followed by an endoscopy or a blood test can be very helpful. Some patients don't have positive tests but still have the symptoms that I described after eating gluten. These patients have a disease called non-celiac gluten intolerance. When gluten is removed from the diet of patients with celiac disease and non-celiac gluten intolerance, the symptoms resolve. Um, therefore, it's very important for patients to clearly understand how to avoid this protein. A dietitian or a nutritionist can be very helpful. If gluten avoidance is not effective for patients with celiac disease and ameliorating symptoms, corticosteroids may be used. One should note that celiac disease and non-celiac gluten intolerance are different from food allergy. 
to wheat. Food allergy to wheat is caused by the immune system having an overactive response um, against the wheat protein. This response is fairly immediate and can occur within four hours of ingestion of the food. It can result in symptoms that are classic for food allergy, which include hives, swelling of the skin, coughing, sometimes vomiting, and possibly a drop in blood pressure. These symptoms are very serious, and if you think you may have a wheat allergy, you should see an allergist or immunologist. Patients that have wheat allergy should make sure that they strictly avoid wheat and all the foods that they eat. They should also make sure that they carry a medicine called epinephrine that can be used to treat the potential life-threatening reaction called anaphylaxis that can occur after a patient with wheat allergy eats wheat products. A patient with wheat allergy should also carry an action plan to make sure that if the patient eats wheat and has a reaction, other people who are around them will know what to do and how to treat them. I hope this has been very helpful to you in talking about the true health effects of celiac disease, non-celiac gluten intolerance, and wheat allergy.